One year ago this past week, coronavirus hit home. Emergency orders shutting down schools and businesses in Wisconsin, forcing a new way of life upon us. As we all wait for it to be over, a question, can a look at the past help us survive the present? Nobody had built a playbook for this before. Milwaukee, more than 100 years ago. In the winter of 1918, the city of Milwaukee found itself in the midst of a crisis almost exactly like our own. The great influenza pandemic, or Spanish flu, sweeping the globe at the time, struck Milwaukee as well. The influenza pandemic was fast. You got it quick and you died quick if you were going to die, and that's tragic. But then that also allowed the flu to move through really quickly. UWM history professor Chris Cantwell studied the Spanish flu's impact on Milwaukee, creating a podcast series virtually with his graduate students. They worked with people here at the Milwaukee County Historical Society to learn about the last pandemic and to see if looking at the past just might be the key to help us survive the present. Nothing like this had ever happened before in Milwaukee. Kevin Abing is the society's lead archivist. He wrote a book about that tumultuous time. In your studies, which pandemic is worse from the Milwaukee perspective? This current pandemic is definitely, I think, been tougher just because it's just been drawn out so much longer. We've been living with COVID for one year, but the Spanish flu in Milwaukee was over much faster. So the city of Milwaukee was only shut down for like five weeks. Five weeks? Yeah, two shutdowns over the span of two months. Why was it over so much faster back then? The city was so proactive and aggressive in its um, fight against the flu that it was able to sort of head off worse outcomes. The city's health commissioner took drastic steps early. He was the one who issued the order to shut down the theaters, restaurants, he closed the zoo. By and large, most Milwaukeeans grumbled about it, certainly, but they followed the rules. Residents complied with the lockdown orders and avoided crowds. And if they didn't... They could be fined, I think it was up to 100 bucks, and repeat offenders that they could be sent to the House of Corrections for like six months. They watched their distance and they wore masks. The whole mask thing definitely got more politicized than it was back then. So how did we fare during the Spanish flu? Milwaukee did really well. The city had the second lowest death rate um, for a city of its size across the country. I just remember praying that at least some patients would survive. The podcast created by Dr. Kentwell's class shares insights from key players then and now. So what can history teach us about the fastest way to get back to normal? You know, what was true in 1918 really remains true today in terms of, you know, trusting the professionals whose job it is to protect us. Trusting science, trusting research, and trusting expertise is the best way forward. Now for perspective, the Spanish flu killed more than 8,400 Wisconsinites and sickened about 103,000. The latest COVID numbers show more than 6,500 people in Wisconsin have died, and the case number stands at about 571,000. The podcast is called The Healthiest City, and it's available on all app platforms. You'll also find a link on the upfront page at WISN.com. Thanks for your time today. I'm Joyce Garbasiak, in for Adrian Patterson. Join us again next Sunday for Upfront.